Um, my name is Erika. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, and today I'm presenting Getting Started with Vagrant. So before getting started, let me present myself. Um, my name is Erika, as I said before. I am from Brazil, but I actually I'm living in Amsterdam now since 2012, and I am a PHP developer for about 10 years now. Um, I recently published a book about Vagrant, uh, it's called a Vagrant Cookbook, and I will, I will talk more about this later. Um, I am a member of the PHP Woman user group. Um, if you are a PHP developer, I, I strongly encourage you to have a look at our website, phpwoman.org. Uh, we try to support women in tech, um, sending uh, some people to conferences, and not only women, also beginners, and um, also men, people who are starting. And also, I'm part of the Amsterdam PHP user group. So, what do you expect from this talk? This talk is an introduction to Vagrant. Uh, I will start with a quick uh, guide showing the basics, uh, the terms, and everything you need to know to get started. I will also talk a little bit about provisioning, um, choosing a provisioner, and uh, I will show a practical example using Ansible, and I will give you some pro tips and useful resources to get started with Vagrant. So, let's start. The first thing that people uh, question me about uh, when I talk about Vagrant is why using Vagrant? Because, uh, like, we've been developing for years and we never needed it before. Why do we need it now? So actually, there's a simple answer for that, and I think that everyone here, if you ever work it with developing, you know that this is very common, very common problem, especially for uh, web development, because it's very hard to keep track of everything you install in your working machine, in your laptop, in your computer. And so when you have a lot of coworkers in the same project, it starts to get very tricky. Also, when you deploy the application, uh, normally the production server is different and it's very hard to, to know what went wrong. So, um, Vagrant comes to solve this problem by providing you with a reproducible and portable development environment. So, what that means? Um, it means that uh, the environment for the application will be very uh, targeted and it will be exactly the same for all people who are working in the project, all co-workers. Um, and it's portable because everything you need, it's going to be inside the project repository. So you will just have uh, some more files in your repository and you just need to clone the repository and run Vagrant app and your project will be up and running in a few minutes. So Vagrant really enables easier code collaboration because uh, then your coworkers, someone new to the project can just clone the repository and run Vagrant app uh, and everything will be working, doesn't need to work, uh, worry about uh, setting up the right environment. This is uh, especially helpful for open source projects. If you have an open source project, uh, you have, uh, it will be easier for people to get involved and to contribute to your project because you don't need to worry too much about the environment. You can also use Vagrant to perform some backend environment tests and to see how your application behaves, performs in different web servers in different environments. You can also use Vagrant to experiment, to test uh, automation tools that are usually used for deployment, uh, like Puppet, Ansible. Um, and you can also uh, deploy real servers with Vagrant in services, in cloud services like Amazon and DigitalOcean, for instance. And everything without messing with your working machine, because it's all uh, in all isolated in virtual machines. You, don't, you are not installing stuff in your, in your working machine. So to get started, what you need basically is uh, Vagrant and VirtualBox. 
um, VirtualBox is the default Vagrant provider. And I don't know how many of you already used VirtualBox before. Okay, good. VirtualBox is a software to create virtual machines, so you can use it to run. Uh, if I, I have a Linux, for instance, in my machine, I have VirtualBox, and I can run a Windows inside my Linux. It's very useful. Uh, and what is a provider? So let me explain better how Vagrant works. So you have uh, the host. The host machine is your working machine where you have Vagrant installed and VirtualBox. So uh, you have the provider. Think about the provider as a computer store, for instance. Uh, you go there with some requirements. You, need a, you want a, a machine with some amount of memory and uh, operation, operating system. And then you have the provider will give you uh, a Guest machine. A Guest machine is a virtual machine with a very basic operating system installed. So we have VirtualBox. Is a default provider, but we also we can use VMware, but we have to pay because VMware is paid. And there are also other providers that we can use, but the VirtualBox is a default one, and we are focusing on VirtualBox here. And what is a provisioner? So when you get your machine from the computer store, you have to install your stuff, right? You have to set up your uh, environment, install a web server, everything. And then the provisioner is responsible for automating this process. So you don't have to worry about installing everything manually. The provisioner will do everything, uh, install packages, setting, set up stuff, and everything automated. So Vagrant has a lot of different provisioners, but the most used ones are Puppet, Chef, and Ansible. These tools are used normally for um, deployment, for setting up environments and uh, infrastructure with multiple servers, uh, but they can be used also with Vagrant to provision your Guest machine. And now let's talk uh, about some terms that we need to understand for using going to practice. So the first thing, boxes. A box is basically an image of an operating system. So when you are uh, creating a project, a vagrant project, you need to choose a box. It's a base box that you, it will be your operating system. So normally we use Ubuntu boxes, Ubuntu server. Uh, vagrant provides some boxes, uh, Ubuntu boxes, but you can also find uh, other Linux distributions like CentOS and other stuff. Um, Host and guest, I talked about this earlier, the previous slide. Uh, the host machine is the machine where you have Vagrant installed, and the guest machine is the one, uh, the virtual machine that Vagrant creates. The provider, I also say, talked about it before. Uh, we have VirtualBox as a default provider, and we can also use VMware and others. The provisioner will set up the machine. As I talked before, also Puppet, Chef, Ansible, and also we can use Shell Script as a basic provisioner. The synchronizer, the synced folder, is a folder that is shared between the host and the Glass machine. Because the Glass machine doesn't really know about the host machine. They are kind of separated. So when we, we have this, uh, shared folder between them both. Uh, we can keep using uh, our host machine, our favorite editor to uh, code and make changes to our application. And you can just use the Quest machine to test the application, to run the application uh, through our browser. So it's very important to have the synchronized folder. The Vagrant file. Um, is the file that contains all the Vagrant settings, especially for the virtual machine where you are going to define the box, uh, the network, um, also the provisioner that you are going to use, amongst other uh, settings. So this is a basic Vagrant file, a very basic example. So now you have 
Vagrant and VirtualBox installed in your machine, and then you go to your project repository, your project root, and you create this file. It's called a Vagrant file, and it's a Ruby file, but it's very simple. It's just some variable definitions. Uh, you set up the box here. It's an example of the box. So we have a name that is shared across the system. So when you want to use this box again, you just uh, need to provide the name and it, Vagrant won't download it again. It downloads only once. The first time it will download from this URL and import to the system. And this is a basic provision. It's just a shell command, uh, an inline echo command. And we are going to see now an, an example of an output. So I'm running from the command line, Vagrant app. And then you can see that the machine is uh, bringing up, is being bringing up by using the VirtualBox provider. So it starts importing the box, it's the Ubuntu box. It takes some time sometimes. And then it's uh, setting network stuff and it's booting the machine. So a few more minutes. Mm. This is a video from an actual uh, set up. This warning is just uh, about the Quest additions. You don't need to worry about that. And then at the end here, you can see uh, the shell provision they're running. So Vagrant will uh, boot the machine, uh, set up the network, everything that you define it in your Vagrant file, and at the end, it will run the provisioners that you set up also in your Vagrant file. In our case, it was very simple shell, just uh, a line, echo, and very simple. But in a real case, it will be like installing packages, installing a web server, and doing stuff like that. So this is uh, basic commands from Vagrant. So we have Vagrant app, is the basic one when you don't have anything yet. You run Vagrant app and the machine will be turned on. Um, you can log in to the machine with Vagrant SSH. It's just like a normal machine. You will log in. You don't need to provide login and password. It will automatic log in. Um, Vagrant Reload is for rebooting the machine. And when you make changes to the Vagrant file, for instance, if you increase the memory or add a provision or make changes, and then you need to reload, reboot the machine. Uh, Vagrant Provisioner will only run the provisioner. So the machine supposedly is already uh, booted, uh, it's already on, and then you, you will run Vagrant Provision and it will run again only the provisioner. So if you make changes, you add a new task, you add a new, you want to install a new package or something new, you just need to run Vagrant Provision. Vagrant Halt will turn off the machine. Vagrant Suspend will save the state, and then Vagrant Resume will take uh, Resume a previously suspended machine, and Vagrant Destroy will like um, delete er all changes that you made to the box, will uh, turn the box into the original state, so you will use this normally when you are creating a provision, and then you want to make sure that everything is running from the very start to the end, so you destroy all the changes and start from scratch. And now for the provisioning part. So we talked about the basic, basic stuff from Vagrant, um, how to manage it, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about the provisioning part. Is the part, does it, is the, the heart of the, the Vagrant project because it's where all the settings are, uh, all the, the environment is set up. And we have uh, the shell provisioner also, is a very basic, is the easiest one, but the shell cannot be compared to the other tools because it's very simple. Uh, these tools uh, uh, like Puppet and Chef, Ansible, they are like frameworks 
they have a lot of features, built-in features, that if you wanted to use shell script, you would have to implement everything manually. Um, so some of the, the features that they have, the automation tools are like, they have a more clear language, uh, it's very, it's easier to see, to understand what's being done. It's not like shell. Uh, they have uh, an idempotent state, which means that the, at the end, the results will be all, always the same. If you create new tasks, it will only execute uh, the tasks that weren't run before. Uh, it saves the state of the machine. So if you make changes that, to the provision, it will only run the changes. And it's very important. Uh, they have also templating, uh, so it's very uh, useful for uh, creating, setting up configuration files. Uh, like you have a web server, Nginx, for instance, you have to change the, the vhost for Apache also, set configurations in any uh, file. It's very easy with templates. And also, these tools have a lot of modules, some of them built-in modules, others you can find in a community open source modules. It's easy to find anything that you want. Like, I want to install to automate installing uh, Nginx with PHP or something else. Then it's easy to find, because the community has a lot of stuff, shares a lot of stuff. And so, um, Talking about the provisioners, the automation tools, uh, I made this a comparison so you can have an idea of the differences between them. I also made a research about the usage of these tools and so Puppet is the most used one, is the most popular one, uh, Chef is the second one and Ansible is the third one. They are the three most used uh, provisioners for Vagrant. And then um, Puppet is the more uh, old one, it's the first one of this, this, uh, in this fashion. So these other tools are always inspired by Puppet, but Puppet has something that is really not cool, is that the execution order of the tasks, you have a file where you define all the tasks, uh, like uh, run apt get update, then install nginx or install apache, and you have all these on the file, but the tests aren't executed in the same order you define them. It's not sequential on Puppet. Uh, so this is, can be very tricky. Uh, you need to explicitly declare dependencies, so you define a task installing uh, apache, but you have to define that this task uh, will only be executed after the apt get update, because you need to run it first. So you have to always define these dependencies, and it's very uh, tricky, it can, be a lot, can get you in a lot of trouble. But uh, it's the most popular one, Puppet, um, and it's not very complicated, but it, it has a custom language based on Ruby. So it, it uh, has more clarity than using pure Ruby because uh, it's something with one job. It's easier to understand what's being done, to see. Um, but this uh, task problem is really uh, a problem, especially if you are starting. So Chef uh, is the second most used provisioner and it's especially popular with Ruby developers because it, the scripts are written in Ruby, in pure Ruby. It's not custom, it's real Ruby. So um, the recipes, as they call it, the recipes are the scripts where you define the tasks. Um, the recipes are written in Ruby, so you can use everything from Ruby inside the recipes. Uh, so it makes it easier for Ruby developers, but if you are not used to Ruby, it might be hard for you, it might be harder. Um, the recipes are um, organized into cookbooks in Chef. In Puppet, we have manifests, and they are organized into modules. Uh, the documentation of Chef is very chaotic. It's very hard to find stuff there, so also might be very hard for people to get started. Um, so the overall learning curve is high on Chef. It's uh, moderate on Puppet. And now I would like to talk about Ansible. Uh, Ansible is the 
third most used provisioner. It is still kind of new and still uh, changing a lot uh, with new features. But it's very, very straightforward. The scripts are uh, written in YML. It's very, very simple, human readable. So it makes it very easy. Uh, the, the scripts are called playbooks, and they can be organized into roles. It's the equivalent of the modules on Puppet and the cookbooks on Chef. Uh, the documentation is very clear. And the general, the overall learning curve is very low because it's easy, it's YML, very simple. The only thing is that you need to install Ansible in your host machine. Uh, with the other two, you don't need to. You just need to have Vagrant and VirtualBox. But for Ansible, you also have to install Ansible. And now I'm going to show a practical example using Ansible and how the playbook looks like. So I'm going to show uh, installing Nginx and PHP 5 FPM. Um, but it's very simple, it's just installing the packages. Normally you have uh, some other tasks to complementary tasks, but just to show you how it looks like. First, uh, the Vagrant file. We need to add this to the Vagrant file. To the Vagrant file. Uh, this is the, the provision definition. We are defining that we want to use the Ansible provisioner, and we define the path for our playbook, just this. And now, the playbook. So, we are telling Ansible to run these tasks in all hosts in our inventory. We don't need to worry about that because with Vagrant, we only have one machine usually. So we're just running all, it's just one machine. Um, we are saying that we want to use sudo for all the tasks. And, and here we have the list of the tasks. It's just like a YML array, it's very simple. And then the name here is only for, um, for debugging, to show, to you show up in the, in the output. And we are using the APT module. First, we, uh, this is the equivalent of running a PT get update. We are updating the cache of the package manager. And here we are installing Nginx. And we are here installing PHP 5 FPM. So we define the package. And we, can, we also have other uh, modules, not only APT. This is just an example of how, to, how you install packages. And this is the output of Vagrant with Ansible as a provisioner. So it will start with the same, um, same Vagrant stuff first, booting the machine, setting the network. And so when, when it finishes, you def when you define also the network, you can define an IP address in your private network. It, when Vagrant finishes everything, you can just go to your browser and access the IP address that you define it. And it's very useful, really, especially for, for web development. So now it's running the provision Ansible, and you can see all the tasks, update APT, the first task. At first, it, uh, this part here, it's gathering information about the system. Uh, you can use this information uh, for inside your tasks, also like the IP address of the interface, the, uh, the first network interface or the second network interface, the host name of the machine. And here you can see the tasks, install Nginx and install PHP 5 of PM. So it's very, very straightforward. The output is very clean, also easy to understand. And okay, um, you can also increase the verbosity of this output. If you want to, you can uh, add a line to the Vagrant file, and then it will show all everything that is being done. Ansible uh, executes the tasks with, uh, via SSH. So when, if you increase the verbosity, you can see all the connection stuff, and it's useful sometimes for debugging. 
Um, so this was a practical example. And now I'm going to show, to, to share some important uh, pro tips for creating better provisions. The first thing that we need to uh, keep in mind is that it's very important to run apt-get update first to update the cache of the package manager um, because uh, the boxes that we download, sometimes they are very outdated, so you, you really want, need to remember to run apt-get update first. And especially if you are using Puppet, that doesn't have a sequential uh, execution order. Sometimes you can uh, get in trouble. You think that it's going to be executed first, but it's not. So pay attention to that. And now uh, debugging. If you have some unknown vagrant error, something that you don't, I'm not sure ab about, uh, you can use the virtual box interface or VMware interface, the GUI, and usually it will show more information about the error. If you have a provisioner and known provisioner error, something that is not very clear in the error message, you can also increase the provisioner verbosity. As I said before, it will really help you to debug to find the problem. And if it's not working as expected, like it doesn't get, you don't get an error, but the result's not as expected, then the best thing to do is log in, uh, fix the problem, uh, and then afterwards you can automate it. After, you need to know what's going on, you need to know how it's done before you can automate, right? So, uh, now some important, some useful resources where you to get started. If you want to learn more about Vagrant, um, you can uh, have a look at this book, my book, Vagrant Cookbook on LeanPub. It's an e-book, e uh, and this is a, this link is a special discount code for uh, for uh, the first woman. I will upload the slides with this, so you can get it later if you want to. Okay, it's okay. Can I go? <laughs> I will tweet also the link, don't worry. So this book has, um, has a more deep, um, it goes deeper into the, into the three provisioners that, we, that I uh, talk here. Puppet and Sibyl Chef has a quick get, uh, starting, getting started guide um, and also goes through all the beginning to some advanced topics like how to deploy real servers into cloud services using Vagrant and how to optimize everything. And that's it. Um, I will post the link later, okay? So um, if you want to get started uh, and you don't want to worry about creating everything manually, you can use some uh, GUI tools, GUI tools um, like this one. This is PuffPet, this is a, a web interface that generates some Vagrant uh, packages, bundles, with a Vagrant file and uh, provisioning using Puppet. So you can, uh, it has a lot of options, you can choose uh, which server you want, but this is more focused on PHP, but you can also uh, download it and change to your needs, you don't need to, to use just as is. You can download it as a base and change to your needs. And now there's this also, Fansible. It's, uh, it's like the same as the before, the PuffPet, but with Ansible. So this one uses Ansible. I started this project last week and people are already contributing. It's open source, you can contribute too if you want. It's very welcome. And so you can choose the box and choose a web server and stuff like that. Same thing is focused on PHP, but you can use it as a base for some other project and then change as you need. Um, if you want to compare the provisioners, you can uh, have a look at this GitHub uh, project. It's a sandbox, also for PHP, but as I said before, uh, you can change for your needs and you can see uh, how the provision looks like 
with the three different provisioners I talked about here, chef and Cibot and puppet. So it's good to get started. So now, do you have questions? Does anyone have questions? Run a little quick. Um, if you don't want to ask questions now, no problem. If you want to ask later, you can find me here or you can also find me on Twitter. So if you have any questions or anything, you can come here. And also this link has some useful resources, some uh, blog posts with uh, um, beginner guy, a beginner guide to Vagrant uh, using Puppet. It has also other posts uh, for optimizing Vagrant projects. And if you are a PHP developer, again, I recommend you to have a look at PHP Women website. Uh, we also, uh, we, are, um, we have now a quick start campaign uh, for uh, the Women's Day, International Day, uh, we are creating uh, purple elephants. You know, if you are a PHP developer, you know what an, an elephant is, uh, the fluffy elephant. So we are creating purple elephants uh, and we are raising some money for uh, projects that will help um, for inclusive, uh, including women in tech and supporting women in tech. So that's it. Uh, thank you, and that's it. <laughs>